Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jimmy, today we have exclusive access to the first 20 pages of uh, the big Kickstarter that's going on right now, the Kelly Jones, Matt Wagner, Dracula graphic novel project. Let's go put it under the microscope. Cartoonist Cafe brought to you uh, in part by our Patreon uh, and the King Kayfavers on the Patreon are hanging out with us in a live stream recording session while we're making these videos. They get all the videos uh, produced before anybody else mitigates the Kayfabe effect and uh, with more than 1500 videos in our filmography, good chance you might not have seen everything. We might have talked about your favorite comics. Go on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel, hit the magnifying glass, search for your favorite titles, check out those episodes and without further ado, big shouts to Kelly Jones and uh, Matt Wagner, who hooked us up with the PDF of book one of their Dracula series of graphic novels. And uh, we're, we're, we have exclusive, uh, exclusive opportunity to take a look at the first 20 pages of, uh, of their Dracula works. Uh, this splash page have, has been uh, splashed about the internet. We've seen it before, but let's break it down on that molecular level, man. Uh, Dr Dracula is a, I've, I've read it twice. And uh, it's an epistolary novel. Like it's it's cobbled together from from journals and uh, newspaper headlines and letters and uh, all sorts of stuff. It's not just like a standard. This happened and this happened. You know, there's there's mass media involved. And I think that that's a real smart approach to like keep that epistolary uh, element with the diary of uh, Vlad Dracul. Yeah, it's very thoughtful, this this entire book. Yeah. And clearly done by people who are huge fans of the source material, even though this is original work. Um, you know, it's Dracula. It's still Dracula, so... I think that uh, I think that Kelly Jones is putting up pulling out all the stops doing uh, his, his damn this. We talked to those guys fairly recently, and we, we put it on record. You guys did this on spec, and it is just uh, so rare that people who are... Like Kelly Jones more than Wagner, because Wagner's always been kind of like on the indie scene, you know, thereabouts. Uh, but Kelly Jones is a consummate professional, could be making top page rates at DC Comics all day if he felt like it. But he's, he's uh, you know, taken that powder. He's hunkered down, spent six months uh, doing the 90 pages that we have here. And it's equal to or greater than uh, the the effort exerted in any of his mainstream works. It's absolutely stunning. And what a perfect artist for a Dracula story. You see these great shadows everywhere, uh, very moody in the black and white part. But also note the color as we go through this. Absolutely. Because it's Jose Villarubia and he's doing these bright saturated. We've heard Giallo is thrown around quite a bit in regards to this. And I think it's a beautiful pairing of color and black and white art. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Uh, what we're having right here, this is this is a we're getting those little glimpses of Vlad, like the famous pieces, right? Like we know this piece from the painting and we see the, the, the facial hair, uh, the red is reserved for, for Vlad. And you know, we're, he's, he's lacing up his boots. Yes. After banging some broads, he's got his little Peckerwood assistant. Who's like his squire type character. Preparing for battle, satiating his spirit and then heading out to battle. Yeah, dude. But he first, he's got a, like, you know, he's got his little, this is going to be a two-page spread. This video is brought to you by the books that we make. Coming out in November, I have Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Alive, also available from Image Comics. I've also been self-publishing. True Crime Funnies you can buy on my website, jimrug.com. You can also get these from my Patreon, jimrug.com. Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can find 1986 and BW zines as Hulk Grand Design is my contribution to the Grand Design series from Marvel Comics. These are going out of print, so pick this up if your comic shop still has one and you haven't added it to your shelf yet. Ed's latest, Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, 500 plus pages of all the Hip Hop Family Tree comics, plus 140 bonus pages. X-Men Grand Design collects Ed's three X-Men Grand Design volumes in one Easy to find trade paperback because several of those original volumes are out of print. And Red Room, Antisocial Network and Trigger Warnings, both available now with a third volume, Crypto Killers, coming in January. And now back to our video. We're not going to look at the two-page spread because we got 20 pages to look at. And if we did the spread, then you get 21. And we didn't agree to that. 
So uh, this is one part of the spread. And dude, this might be babies. You know, this, this could be a kid or something. It's, it's definitely a little person compared to uh, the rivers of gore that abound here. You see him in his outfit. You know, got that um, Hal Foster vibe. Like it has all the bits to it. It has the, like the family crest. It's got the um, male to it. The the sort of animal skin fur. It was cold back in those days, man. There was no furnace. It's fantastic. And the gore level of those bodies, just extreme. <laughs> Not something I would expect to see in here. And honestly, I wonder if it would get by if you were working with a publisher. No, yeah, totally. Especially this piece. Even though people... Are, it's like they don't, they don't know what they're looking at or something. But... Yeah, it's disturbing. But, uh, you know, that that is an impalement through the anal crevice. Uh, the, the underdrawing, though, like the like the hips, you could I could see the 3D in there, mm -hmm. the way that, that Kelly Jones lights it. You know, I see the, the way Loomis draws, draws the hips, right? It's two discs yes. that, that are like this, but you could see the fat pads of the butt, and they're well lit. Like, it's the level of, for, for as well-adjusted a man as Kelly Jones is when he was chatting to us and stuff, the levels of thought that he has to put in to light this right here is uh, it's pretty deep. You know what though? Call back to Dead Man. You right. know what I mean? Like seeing that kind of emaciated form on there. And also, if you know how to do anatomy, like in a way, you look at that and it's so much fun seeing like that skin is like sunken in. Yeah. So you see the bones protruding. Right. Good stuff. Yeah, they've been ha they've been hanging there for a little while. Check that stuff out, dude. Taking a chunk out of homeboy. Yes. And it's like it's one good swipe. So it's like ripping the guts out of this guy. Keep in mind, man. During that, like, late period North Star, you know, the Andrew Rev North Star, I got cold-blooded number one with a Kelly Jones cover. He he comes from this pedigree, dude. Yes, definitely. He's, a, he's, he's an outlaw cartoonist that snuck into the mainstream. Man, that use of, like, the, the chain mail, you know, drawing that in different ways to capture motion, it's exceptional work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we got Vlad, almost, almost godlike, right? Uh, he, you know, it looks like it could be a Kirby Asgardian. And this part on the first read, I'm like, ah, oh, that feels a little dicey. Like, why would you have, you know, a, a, a third character who looks so close to Vlad? Well, why do you do that? Because you want everybody to think it's Vlad. Don't all the world leaders do this? Right. Like, isn't this what we encounter throughout uh, recorded history? Yeah, man. I, I heard that uh, Abraham, there's two Abraham Lincolns, man. <laughs> but, uh, the cool thing is, is that you have to meet Kelly Jones and Matt Wagner in the middle. This ain't this ain't a Marvel comic where it's going to be a caption right here telling you how close this dude looks to Vlad, and then we're going to cut his head off and let everybody think that this is Vlad. It's just a couple of panels that, uh, in at the most basic core level of storytelling, if you don't have the entire thing, you're like, man, you shouldn't have two. People are going to get confused, man. But then you realize that's a part of the story. Yeah, it's very clear. And what a great panel. In the middle of the page like that, tell me that's not a dramatic image. Now, this guy's bending the knee. My lord, like, I'm yours to command. So he is taking uh, people who have pledged complete fealty to him, and he's using them as pawns in his game, and that does not stop. Oh, no, it's a great... Right on character. Is, is We're going to see again and again. One of the nice parts of writing, you know, having a character that consistent... Right. It's fantastic. And it's the way you build a character by... We're going to see several examples of this. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're, not, we're going to get into a couple just in the section that we have here, but uh, it, it gets deep. So we have uh, Vlad change the facial hair a little bit. And, uh, the, you know, he's with the squire. So it's like they're two peasant Peckerwoods. Uh, I like to think that uh, Cheech Marin will be cast in the role of this guy right there. <laughs> Uh, these Turkish soldiers that they just kind of uh, happen upon. Still maintaining that red color on the garb. Like, red is reserved for Vlad. You know, it's very poetic. It makes sense. Vampire's blood, give him the red. This was one of the pages whenever we were talking to Kelly Jones that I was thinking of whenever I asked him about his storytelling. Mm -hmm. Because, like, some of this stuff is... It's not exciting, but you need it. Like, mm -hmm. it makes it very clear as you're reading through this. And not every cartoonist does that. Especially guys who are very stylistic. Right. So we got the back and forth with between his Turk soldiers and uh, Vlad and his like little squire, and they're the follies in this in this section. You know these guys are calling them uh, epithets and things. You guys are a couple gay gay dudes and shit, and uh, sends them off. So Vlad has to humble himself to to uh, keep safe. Yes. 
werewolf uh, in the distance kind of watching. So uh, Wagner throughout is going to pepper this comic with great stuff for Kelly, Kelly Jones to kind of uh, rise to the occasion and, 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 and put together. Man, it doesn't take long. It's a good example as you're saying that. Yeah, well-lit uh, female figure. Doing the serpent stuff, I always wonder who's, whose job it is to uh, serpent it up, man. Is that Jose who's, who's deciding what turns blue? Yeah, you do wonder. It looks so good. And I give credit to the colorist in this instance, mm-hmm. but who, I don't know that. You know, like maybe it's something that Kelly Jones envisioned. Uh, but that's what's great about a, te- a comic where your collaborators are actually all working well together. Right. It's hard to tell who to give credit to, but I love the page. So got the wolf. Man, fantastic Watching. lighting. Again, that color, man. That night sky going down into like a bloody horizon. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, really sweet, man. The uh, sort of iconography of these of these feral beasts, you know, how, how twisted up they are and, and those, those glaring eyes, you know, that, that lighting on that, uh, werewolf right there is straight out of like Bernie Wright's in cycle of the werewolf. Yep. Uh, Stephen King shit. Yeah, no doubt. I also love that this panel at the top, we go black is like your silhouette and then a white reverse silhouette is the uh, bottom edge of that panel. Very cool. Pretty, pretty dope. And, uh, dude, it is not a full moon. Uh, it is it is like a crescent moon, but like you're, he's given us the uh, the shadow. Yeah, interesting. On uh, the moon with all the craters and stuff. <laughs> what the hell, man? Right? Like a zombie coming out of that wood? Yeah, it's it's like a it's like a uh, it's like the Nosferatu type uh, vampire. You know, like those vampires are built into this thing. And look at what Jones does with the ribs. You know, he gives him those dead man ribs with like the abs underneath. Like he has some knowledge. He has such knowledge of uh, anatomy and he just distorts it as, as he wishes. Takes me a minute to get there because I love that face. Oh, like yeah. with those fangs, but also with the nose upturned like that. It's almost like that um, sunken monster vampire face style with the big nostrils and the flat face. It's good design. Totally, man. Uh, and it, they're getting straight pounced. Puts that puts that blade inside of them. And this is where Kelly Jones is really starting to play around with those those um, page compositions, where the things that make the panel borders mm-hmm. are less obvious. You know, like the like this is a panel. Uh, the the uh, hand holding the torch breaks two panels uh, of 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 the comic. It's pretty sick. Does a great job too of communicating how dangerous these things are. Yeah. It feels like this is a, a tough fight. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, like, it's like uh, Alien, right? Where, where it's like you have you have one alien to fight, but you know that there's going to be more. So if this one is tough as hell, how the heck are we going to even defeat a posse of these things? I'm so happy to see the colors on these pages, too. It's not browns that are, that are dominating these pages. Right. This was fun for uh, compositions, using the tree to, to break up things. And at the end of the day, like if, if you broke this page down simply, the uh, Matt Wagner direction would be simple. It's like, it's like you know, they got to traverse the woods. They got to set up like a lean to or uh, some kind of teepee or something. You know, uh, Kelly Jones has to make this thing work and has to create the environment. And that is just... That is a Lovecraftian tree. You know what Wagner does bring here, though, is you see Vlad's companion struggling. Like, like where they're going is not just darkness, like dark of night, but dark of soul. Like, he is <laughs> sick passing through this. They're, they're almost going to another world. Oh, man, when you see a thatched roof in the middle of nowhere in a story like this, <laughs> you know, you know it ain't, it ain't going to be pretty. Uh, Kelly Jones going deep with the uh with the tree limbs and shit taking it real far yeah really saying a lot with the artwork there got the couple of goats and what do we know about baby goats man them there's some satanic little fuckers them little buds sticking out of their heads uh we see some skins man like this this is uh if you got like the wolf skin up there that means you're you didn't get taken down by the wolf so you have some competency in uh, self-preservation at the very least man what a page I feel like several of these pages, that, that's my reaction. Right. You know, they're great compositions. They're fantastic character designs. In this case, both her guard dog and this old witch that they've been trekking towards. Yeah, look at the levels of Even the of cauldron. Death. Totally. Yeah, you know, he's, he's sick with that stuff, man. You see, like, the levels of depth with the uh, 
with the tapestry of, of, of the, the um, rags. The face is built very close to, like... I, I've seen Graham Ingalls do that kind of face. I've seen I've seen when uh, when Wrightson will do like an homage to to EC, he would like build that kind of face. That's a that's a piece of physiognomy that that is uh, iconic at this point. Yeah, it's a very classic witch face. Yeah, and notice like these greens are like this is the green place now. Mm -hmm. Got two more pages we get to look at. It's a very sick green. That right. smoke that's uh, going around her, the lighting. For sure, dude. And uh, you know, make, making uh, making a little stew, putting a little bat wing in there, you know, a little you know, squirt an eyeball or whatever the fuck. This is one of those great kind of negative mm -hmm. pieces where, through the steam, we're seeing the face cut in there. Also, look how animal like it is, like with the way the eyes are round because of the shadows. You know, right. you're not getting that almond shaped eye. Instead, you're getting almost like a dog, like the wolf eyes. Absolutely, man. Uh, great lighting there, and just you know adding age to that face not letting you see it too clearly and then what's the final piece of the stew jimmy so man? disgusting just so like spitting into that cauldron it's that goober too that like yeah. you know that's that thick one that you could suck back up so gross the one that would like really make makes parents mad when you do that i can't imagine drawing a fouler looking witch right yeah it's great i sure don't want to see one <laughs> <laughs> all right man this will be our last page for us to uh check yeah that's page 20 and uh, our squire's there. He ain't feeling it. No, he's not only not feeling it, he's telling his, his master, let's get out of here. Yes. This has gone way too far. Yeah, man. And uh, and where do you think it's going to go? <laughs> they didn't come here to turn around. Yeah, last time I checked, Vlad doesn't have a sidekick. He doesn't have a Robin the Boy Wonder with him. Yeah, a little foreshadowing there. But, but fantastic. Like, every one of these pages, I feel like each time I go through this... I like them more. Absolutely. They are doing as like one of their, what do you call it, uh, the, the stretch goals or, you know, the, the higher levels of support on their Kickstarter is like that little portfolio set. And uh, they said that it's like, you know, seven dope images like from from within the book. I bet you that one vampire is one of them. And every couple of pages you're sprinkled with another one. I bet you I could pull all of them out if we if we had access to this entire thing to show everybody. But uh, we got these 20 exclusive pages that we were able to go through. Uh, Wagner does a great job of selling the character of Vlad. Uh, it's, it's maybe a little bit of all of the Seven Deadly Sins built into him because uh, what we didn't really get into where the words and stuff are concerned is... Um, that kind of ambition that can send you down a treacherous path, right? Willing to do anything. Yeah. That's what our, that's what our main character here is, what we're going to watch. Totally, man. Uh, so there it is. The Kickstarter is still going on for a little while. Uh, it's been doing really great. And it's been the talk of comics. And uh, after chatting with the guys, getting access to uh, a couple of pages, it felt like it made sense, man, for the, for the channel. Yeah, it's, it's really fantastic to look at. Good to go, Jimmy? I am. Hey, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are uh, available. Uh, the vids are brought to you by the books that we make. And uh, before you is a very robust section of uh, the books that we have available uh, to begin. There's the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, uh, collecting all of my Hip Hop Family Tree works. It's the 10-year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of hip hop as a culture uh the books are going quick the books are going fast and uh they're flying off the store shelves so get it quickly uh if you want it uh in any sort of timely fashion not the only holiday effort We've got the trade paperback for the x-men grand design trilogy from marvel comics it is going to be available in stores on november 14th got the comp copies of that uh right now two trade paperbacks of red room are out there anti-social network and trigger warnings with a third coming to you called crypto killers in 2024 uh january jimmy what do you have street angel princess of poverty is my next release it'll be out at the end of november from image comics you should be able to get that wherever books are bought and sold it is a companion piece to street angel deadly squirrel live also from image comics these two books Besides looking good on your shelf like a set next to each other, collect all of the Street Angel comics that I have made so far. So pick up both of those if you haven't already. I have been self-publishing True Crime Funnies, 
It's a collection of nonfiction stories, the 1986 zine celebrating the greatest year in comics history, and the BW zine celebrating the black and white explosion and self-publishing boom of the 80s and early 90s. These are all available on patreon.com slash jimrug if you want to read them now. Otherwise, uh, follow me and I'll let you know whenever they're available to buy from my website, jimrug.com. And Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design series. Um, I believe these are out of print, so pick it up if you haven't already whenever you see it in a comic shop. Um, these are disappearing fast and hard to tell when they'll be back. The books are the most important part of keeping that Cartoonist Kayfabe channel going. Uh, we are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos uh, available to you right now. Give the channel a search. Uh, go on the front page. Hit the magnifying glass. Search for your favorite comics. Check out those episodes. If we did not talk about your favorite uh, comics, let us know what they are in the comments, and we will uh, push those comics a little bit higher on our uh, to-read piles. Uh, the Patreon helps subsidize the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Uh, three different levels of participation there, but the King Kayfabers, the, you know, the top dogs, they get all the videos that we shoot before anybody else gets to see them. They're hanging out with us in the live stream uh, chat room right now as we are recording, and we always shoot a couple extra videos, at least one extra video, so uh, there's a big queue of videos that develop that only the Kings have access to before we release those, you know, later on down the line when Jimmy and I have to take a break or something like this. Uh, once again, the books are the most important part, but there are a few other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video to keep up on what we have coming out and when. You can also pick up Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, hats, cups, mugs, stickers, and lots more of the Cartoonist KFAB Enterprise. <laughs> At our spread shop. That link is also under this video. So uh, there it is. We laid it out. You have uh, num num numerous ways that you can uh, support the channel and keep these videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy, without further ado, uh, let's get out of here. But first, please give everybody their marching orders. Read more comics. <laughs>